Well, George Soros has devoted much of his philanthropic spending on efforts to transform and improve life for those in Eastern Europe. But the billions spent have delivered very little to the region. Joining us now for more on that and more is Anna Porter. She's the author of Buying a Better World, George Soros and Billionaire Philanthropy. Welcome back. So we got to know the man, George Soros, a little bit last night through our conversation. Um, and we sort of left off last night talking about the criticisms and where they come from of Soros. I want to read a critique of Soros. This is, um, was written in The Atlantic last year. It comes from uh, Gara LaMarche, who was one of Soros' former executives, um, talking about the uh, problems with philanthropy. So here's what was written. I do wonder about my progressive friends. They believe in a strong government, in a fair tax system, in a robust social welfare system, and in a vibrant democracy where all voices count equally. Why are they not more concerned about the undemocratic and largely unaccountable nature of philanthropy? Why are we, since I too have failed for years, to ask these big questions? hypersensitive to the dangers of big money in politics and the way it perpetuates advantage and inequality, but blind, it seems, to the dangers of big philanthropy in the public sphere. Given that remark, Anna Porter, how, how accountable and open is George Soros? Well, he doesn't have to be accountable. He is uh, he's a billionaire and uh, he still makes a lot of money and uh, he's a philanthropist um, of his own devising. Um, he is, in fact, involved in American politics. He, uh, he supported uh, Obama. Um, he, he didn't used to be, but he is now. And, uh, and he's part of the super PAC, uh, now engaged in, uh, already engaged in, uh, in trying to get Hillary uh, Clinton to be the next president mm -hmm. of the United States. So he's involved in, uh, in party politics. And he's, he's involved in, um, in changing the way Americans do things, politics. Now, some of that is hard to be critical of. Uh, palliative care. Um, when George Soros' uh, father died, he died alone and, uh, and in a terribly un- in a situation that made his last days utterly miserable. I mean, I was going to say unhappy, but in fact, it was worse than that. Um, the American uh, medical system really was not set up to deal with the dying. It's, uh, it's a, it was entirely a system um, to help uh, keep people alive, which is, of course, I mean, you, that's what we have here, too. Yeah, um, we're in debate about, yeah. Debate, exactly. Uh, whereas his mother managed her own death and dying. And, uh, and he, had, he set up a, a foundation to, uh, to help uh, uh, get people thinking differently about death and dying throughout the United States. Now, you know, if you're a fundamental Christian, this is not the kind of thing that you like to see happen, uh, if fundamentalist Christian. Hmm. Um, he has, uh, he hi actually he hired Gara Lamarche, whose statement you read, and I, I think that was in The Atlantic, it was it also was. In, in a number of other publications. I read it, I like Gara Lamarche enormously. He, he is, uh, he's an intellectual involved in, in running philanthropic endeavors, uh, including the, Democrat, the Democracy Alliance, Democracy Alliance, not Democratic, Democracy Alliance, which is, uh, as, it, as the name suggests, a political group. Hmm. Um, that's what he's doing right now. And one of his funders is George Soros. One of his big funders is George Soros. Um, you, you don't see George Soros' name appear in this laudable article. Hmm. Um, He's an intellectual. Um, he actually read the manuscript. I should say that. I should have said that right at the outset. He it's read the okay. manuscript before it, just it went closed, into yeah. print. Um, that's how well I think of him. Hmm. Um, I asked him to read it. Um, he, he makes a very, very good point. Um, and, and in fact, it's a point that's been made by others. But when he went to work for Soros, um, Initially, he, he was asked by Arie Nair, um, who was Soros' uh, chief executive, he was asked to um, come up with some p 
plans that would help eliminate a new uh, government policy um, that deprived uh, immigrant, new immigrants who were not yet American citizens um, from health care. Um, it was called the Emma Lazarus Fund after the poet Emma Lazarus, whose words appear on the Statue of Liberty, mm -hmm. you know, give me your whatever, tired, etc. you know. <laughs> um, so laudable, really, when you think, but it is, um, it's trying to impact uh, policies that, that are supposedly in a democratic society the purview of people who have been elected to office, not to a man who is with ideas, who wishes to change and, the way. And as you say, unaccountable to anyone except for, right. for himself. And, and you know, for, for Soros, it goes so much beyond what he's doing in his own country. It goes to his, his, his reach around, around the world. And I, I, especially in Eastern Europe, where we're seeing a lot of turmoil right now, a lot of concern about what's going on there this year, last year, probably into next year. Um, so what was it for Soros that he looked at Eastern Europe and said, uh-huh, that's, that's a focus. That democratizing Eastern Europe is such a big issue to me. He comes from there. Simple. Uh, and yeah. I mean, I think it's as simple as that. And he, he, uh, he has an understanding of what it's like to live under a dictatorship that doesn't allow you free speech or even free thinking. Um, and uh, when he became involved in, in trying to help um, Eastern Europeans shake the shackles of, of the governments that, uh, that ran uh, their countries, which were in turn, of course, um, funded, controlled by the USSR, he, he was influenced by his, his own youth and, and his ideas about the importance of an open society. Mm. Um, he was um, welcomed by some of, uh, of the people there, and in fact, a lot of them benefited from his largesse. Um, he handed out uh, very, very large sums in, um, in Russia. For, uh, doing for like, example, what kind of projects is he funding? Oh, it's in uh, fellowships. He called them fellowships, and, uh, and 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 the idea was to help Russian scientists survive um, the change, as as the USSR went into a tailspin, trying to uh, come out of its old self and recreate a new Russia um, instead of you know satellites. They would be independent mm. countries, of course. Uh, whether that. No, it hasn't worked. I mean, the, 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 sad, the sad commentary on all that is he spent more than a billion dollars in Russia to get democratic ideas uh, going. Um, it hasn't worked. Russia is not a democratic country, and, uh, and, and, and it is not becoming one. Uh, his foundation in, uh, in Russia was closed down by uh, black clad, um, I don't know whether they were soldiers, nobody knew what right. they were. They were po probably policemen paid for by, by the government because the government gets involved in doing that sort of thing. They, they like to kill critics. More, more journalists have been killed in Russia since uh, 1989 than in any other country. So, you know, uh, they shut down his foundation, his persona non grata. So in, the elite a, hates him, the Russian elite hates him. Well, the Russian elite that's close to um, uh, the government hates him. Uh, Putin hates him and has said so publicly. Um, but the scientists um, he had helped don't hate him. Um, the woman who used to run his foundation um, she is still a great admirer. She's now in. Uh, she's now runs um, foreign language libraries in uh, in Russia. She she believes that even though he's no longer uh, active with a foundation um, on the ground in in Moscow, um, his ideas are are still there, and his ideas will. Alt his ideas about an open society. 
about uh, democracy and so forth will have some effect in the long haul. Now, I, you know, I see no sign of it. Hmm. So it's, you know, on, you can look at it and say, okay, it's a billion dollars down the drain. You can. You can. Um, and given that, if we see it from that, I mean, what went wrong? Too many things to, to count. Um, you know, you, people have written whole books on what went wrong in, um, in Russia. But uh, from Soros' point of view, he was there to, at, the, at a critical time, and he was there to do good. He did not foresee that Gorbachev would become persona non grata in his own country. Um, he did not foresee that the loss of empire would inspire so many Russians to keep voting for Putin. He did not foresee that Yeltsin uh, would appoint Putin. He did, you know, there's, there's things... Uh, I mean, so many people didn't see all these things. No, I mean, not. but he was there. Mm. And, uh, and people expect uh, more of him because this is what, this is what he does. And, you know, I, I actually thought he might go back, and I asked him that question, whether he would ever go back um, into um, Russia in a, in a serious way with a bit of new foundation and so forth. But, um, and, I, and at the time I asked him that question, Khodorkovsky, for whom he has great admiration, was still in, in jail. You know, trumped up charges and all. Um, now he's out, mm -hmm. and I asked him whether this is a sign when the next, next time I saw him and Khodorkovsky was out um, of jail, and in fact out of Russia, whether this uh, was a sign that he may. And he said, no, not yet. No. Not yet. Mm -hmm. You mentioned yesterday that uh, Soros is an, a, a man that mm, is scared to fail, that he believes that you could learn from failure. Is he okay about failing yes. in Russia? Is he yes. okay about yes. it? Yeah. Yes, he said he learned a lot from it. I asked him. I asked him how, you know, how he saw what happened in Russia. He said it was a total failure. Mm. I learned a lot from it. What did, so you, he, what did he learn? Well, I, you know what? Uh, he learned that he was in too deep and that, uh, and that he, he had made assumptions about the government that were proven to be wrong. I mean, that is a big lesson to learn. I think he learned a lot in, uh, in the Czech Republic as well, where he, uh, he supported uh, Václav Havel, who is, uh, was a very difficult man not to be supportive of because he was so wonderful and so genial and so charming. And I, you know, when I met him, I was tongue-tied mm -hmm. just because I was sitting across from him. Sure. And I was going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, he did not, that, you know, he, uh, that didn't go down well with, 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 the, with the subsequent president of the country, uh, Krauss. I mean, he, he hates George Soros. And Soros was, um, uh, he shut down his, um, his uh, university in, uh, in Prague, where he'd been and hoping for government support because Václav Klaus wasn't going to give him any support mm. because Václav Klaus hates him. Right. And did, I asked him about Klaus, and he said, well, you know, some people have visceral dislike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he, that's, a, you know, a couple world leaders he didn't get along with. He, he, he did get very involved um, in, in the breakup of the uh, former Yugoslavia. That, yes. That's, you know, where he made his imprint. So how did he put his money to work there in what... Arguably could, arguably could be called, you know, one of the biggest quagmires uh, yes. in Eastern Europe. So what did he do yes. there? Well, he, uh, he was, um, it was Bosnia that, uh, that attracted him, uh, I think, uh, although he, he had small foundations already in some parts of the former Yugoslavia, um, or well, at that time still, you know, much of Yugoslavia, uh, but... Um, um, what was happening in, in Bosnia when the, uh, during the Serb uh, bombardment of, of the city in Sarajevo um, and the ethnic cleansing is, was really what brought him there and he wanted to do something significant. And, uh, and you know, he was there in person. Mm. He actually went 
to Sarajevo in person, as did Arya Nair, who uh, was head of. Um, actually, Arya Nair, you know, I should have I should have told you yesterday. Arya Nair has had, I think, the most influence of any person on George Soros because not many. No, there are not a lot, lot of people who influence him, but I think Ari and I did. Anyway, um, in, uh, in Bosnia, um, he, uh, he gave uh, uh, $50 million in cash to restore uh, water to homes because people were, um, were lining up for water at pumps. And he saved they, lives. Yes, and, and the Serbs were uh, from, the, from the mountains. Um, just the snipers were mm. killing people as they were standing in line. So, I mean, I think that was an, an, an inc and, and a lot of, oddly enough, um, as I was interviewing a lot of um, uh, people who had worked for Soros and still do, a lot of them actually first met in Sarajevo. So um, it was uh, what he did there helped save lives. And, uh, and it um, cemented relationships with people um, who are still with him. And um, given the context of the former Yugoslavia as, as it's falling apart and the balkanization, I mean, how did the various ethnic groups view him? Hmm. Well, the Serbs did not view him with any <laughs> delight, um, but, uh, but he now has a, has a foundation in Serbia. And he's got foundations throughout um, all the former the, 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 the states that were formerly part of, of Yugoslavia, um, Montenegro. I mean, just all of them. He's got foundations everywhere, and uh, and local people working in those foundations. Now, periodically, his foundations get uh, get shut down, and 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 uh, and the government uh, declares that he and his people are persona non grata, and occasionally they jail them mm. uh, because it, they believe that uh, he's uh, he's trying to his people are trying to have influence on his behalf in local politics. And as he sort of spreads his word of open societies and democracy um, around around the world, and more than spreads his word, puts his money where his mouth is, so to speak, um, and tries to improve the lives for the people that live in these countries, is he a man who? can recognize um, the shortcomings of democracies? Can he see that, or is he, is he sort of blinded by this belief that they are the, the best solution? Well, <laughs> it may not be a perfect system, but it's probably the best we've got. Mm. I think that would be his, uh, he believes that an open society is, is, is the best way to be. So um, I don't, you know, I mean, it's a, it's ironic that, unfortunately, um, a, a democratic uh, country can elect some terrible people. Uh, but alas, that is what happens. And uh, we in the West, uh, we're encouraging uh, dem democracy in the Palestinian territories, for example, and we got Hamas in Gaza. So, and now, you know, we're yeah, not. First democratically elected. Democratically uh, elected, as Putin was democratically elected. Um, so, democracy doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a better government. You're just going to get a free election and people will elect whoever the hell they want. And sometimes you get a worse government. Mm. Uh, does he see that? Yes. He's very good at seeing ironies. He, in fact, says, isn't it ironic that I have become um, one of the most hated figures in Eastern Europe, where I have taken so much trouble to help people. I mean, is he it, does see that. Is that true, that he's one of the most hated? I mean, is. That's, a, yes. that's a fair um, representation. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. He's, he's, he's not Because like... he's seen what? Seen as, the, as a meddler, yes. as an in, uh, influencer, a guy yes. who's just sticking and his nose where it's not invited or wanted or yes. needed. And the lefty, you know, somebody on the left. Um, and and he, he is more on the left than the right, on the one hand. On the other hand, he certainly made his money um, that he's giving away. Um, all over the world, he's made that money in a capitalist system, which is ostensibly 
of the right, mm -hmm. not the left. There's one more um, cause, cause, I'll put it in quotations that I want to ask you about with him, and, and that's the Roma people. Yes. Uh, that he's very passionate about yes. um, helping. And, um, well, just at the stage for us, I mean, the disparity between Roma people across Europe and other Europeans, I, I mean, I don't want to say the locals, but the, the people there, just paint that picture for us, Anna, I mean, in terms of employment, in, in terms of housing, in terms of education. Catastrophic, I think, would describe it as, uh, as, as in a single word. Um, there is no equality. Um, there's no equality in education. Um, there's no equality in job opportunities. In fact, it's almost impossible for Roma to get work in Eastern Europe. Um, the foundation, um, uh, the justice, um, the justice uh, arm of the Soros Foundation actually went to court to, uh, to uh, on, on behalf of the European Union to try and force uh, checks to not isolate Roma kids mm. in, um, in special needs classes because that's where you go as a Roma irrespective of your abilities. Mm. Um, it, um, there's been a, a steady rise in the past seven, eight, ten years in um, anti-Roma sentiment, uh, which expresses itself in everything from beatings to uh, murder. Uh, in, in Hungary, in, in uh, the Czech Republic, in Slovakia, uh, in Romania, uh, the situation of the Roma is absolutely intolerable. Now, what he has, he, he stated that he wanted to really make a difference in, in, in this area. And I think he, to some extent he has, it depends on how you view it. He's funded the education of a thin layer of Roma who have become an elite really, a Roma elite. And on the one hand, um, you know, I, the doctors and lawyers and so forth, but they are a small segment of the Roma population. Um, they, the idea was that by holding them up as shining examples of what the Roma can, can achieve, um, it would make a difference to the lot of the Roma. It hasn't. The situations become worse. Um, it isn't better. The Roma are, are uh, fleeing Hungary, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia, not because they feel like moving around. The Roma have not been wanderers for a very long time. I mean, a very, very, very many decades, centuries. Um, this idea of, of the Roma wandering, because it's uh, part of what they do, is idiotic. Mm. It's not true. It's so a, it's it's a myth. It's well, it's an old, it's a, it's a myth based on old habits, mm. but they've been stationary in 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 these countries, trying to make a life for themselves. So this thin elite um, hasn't really made a difference. Mm. Uh, so does he see that as a failure? Um, I I I think not. And I, I had a, an interesting short discussion uh, with a man called Zelko Jovanovic, who runs the um, Roma Center for all of Eastern Europe out of Budapest. He is, uh, he's himself a Serb, um, Serb Roma. And, uh, oh, God, was sharply dressed guy. <laughs> he, he had three cell phones going, and, and he was, you know, talking in five languages to... Brilliant guy, no doubt. but. I did ask him the question, and, and he really believes that the only way to change the way the Roma uh, struggle is by helping show people what they're capable of. What they're capable of. Okay. So George Soros, I mean, I'm not keeping a tally here. Some success, some failure, you say, when it comes to the plight of the Roma people in marginally perhaps changing people's attitudes. Didn't do so well in Russia. <laughs> this is a man who is uh, 84 years old, has his footprint, uh, his thumbprints all over the world in terms of his philanthropic giving and, and, and work. I'm not wishing for his demise. I'm not saying he's going anywhere anytime soon. 
But what would George Soros, at the end of his life, want to be remembered for? What does he want his legacy to be? Hmm. It's a good question. I, I asked him that. And I know I asked, you did. You're a good journalist. That's and why. I asked him, well, I, 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 I'm much more comfortable asking questions than answering them, as I, I really am. Um, but he, he doesn't want to think about legacy, as he doesn't wish to think about uh, buildings named after him, as he doesn't wish to think about the foundations uh, named after him. He doesn't care about seeing his name up in lights. Um, I think that he would like to see um, the war on drugs in which he has spent a lot of time and effort end. He wants to see it over. He believes that it is absolute anathema in an open society and an excuse for po police to incarcerate black men. Mm. Uh, it's not, it, this belief is founded on truth, if you look at the statistics. Um, he would like to see that happen. He would like to see the European Union back to being an effective, he called it a shiny bauble that it was in its infancy. He would like to have it stop being uh, a collection of debtor nations ruled by a collection of creditor nations, um, which is what it's becoming. He, I think he would like his legacy to include Angela Merkel finally <laughs> hearing what he has to <laughs> say to him. <laughs> She's not listened to him, makes that she point. She has <laughs> not once, and I did ask him. I said, well, he, 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 he published a book about um, about how to solve the problems of the European Union. And I said, well, and what did Angela Merkel? <laughs> and he said, I'm paying attention to what I say. You know, it's kind of disarming. Um, I think he'd like to see that. Um, ultimately, I think his legacy will probably be what he least wanted, which is a building in downtown Budapest, mm -hmm. the open but that the Open Society helped fund and the Open Society Foundation in, of Budapest, of Hungary, is actually housed in, in the university, uh, Central mm. European University, which is uh, there and there's three buildings and it's well, you know, it's endowed. And uh, it's a good university. It's turned out some very fine scholars who, you know, do what fine scholars mm. do, lecture, mm. teach, and so <laughs> forth, and the philosophize, the public philosophers, as, as he is. Well, I suppose, like most legacies, it will be left to uh, interpretation for other people. Thank you for talking to us about George Soros. I appreciate it very much, Anna. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.